This is Talking Heads. We're talking about road safety. And our studio guests are Derek Flint, who's now president of the Isle of Man branch of the Institute of Advanced Motorists, and Sandra Dimolo, who lost a daughter in a car crash. And uh, loads and loads of good comments, but we're running short on time. So let's have a quick look at these. I just had a call from a, a gentleman who was saying that they teach uh, driving differently these days, that he was taught, like I was certainly, uh, to go down through the gears when you're slowing down for, for things like uh, traffic lights. Um, nowadays, not so much so, Derek. Go back to 1994, my advanced car course for the police it, it was you, you you got your speed right then yeah. your gear right um and the premise really was that apart from it back be, being safer that brakes are cheaper to replace than gearboxes and so, more efficient as yeah well. absolutely yeah. absolutely all right uh on the subject of road safety over the past few weeks as winter draws in i know the very high number of vehicles on the Isle of Man still on the roads with faulty lights a simple method of helping road safety a car without a full set of lights is a potential killer says Anne. you know the thing is i can't actually remember a collision that's ever been caused by a one-eyed monster really you know, i can't remember i can never think of one but it's usually the precursor to other things being wrong yes ball tires um the, the the backside falling out of the, the car because of rust or whatever yeah. and i know that that jamie's team have been out and doing an awful lot of stop mm. checks and stuff and it's great because it it gets people talking about it you look at the police website and the, the their forums and, and and stuff on social media and it gets people talking great to see you out get yeah, you know, yeah. get in there and stuff because it's usually the precursor to something else what is is there a, a, a single biggest cause of, of of serious or fatal road traffic collisions pilot error Pilot, just down to like 95% of collisions so you can't just put it down error. to booze you can't put it down no. to speed it's, it's just generally somebody <laughs> making a mistake yeah. yeah i mean you've got the fatal four seat belts drink drive mobile phones and speed yeah and those are the things that that you know from an enforcement point of view you concentrate on those and you will make a difference yeah but Overall, it's down to the choice that somebody's made being wrong or being bad that has led to a consequential collision. Well, here's a, a comment from somebody. I'm not one who goes with the slogan speed kills. Every road death is attributed to a cause, and it's not always speed. There are certain black spots on the roads where many people have died, but the department, in my opinion, doesn't build safety features into our roads, such as proper cambers and road surfaces. This is a two-way thing. Safe driving on safe roads, says Neil. And that's part of the safe system. The engineering side of it is, is a crucial component of that. I mean, if you can re reduce the the impact of somebody coming off on a particular bend by either putting in an advisory or positive speed limits or changing the camber mm -hmm. or putting armco down the side of it those are things that we know will save lives and it's there's still gonna be a crash yeah. but the consequences aren't going to be the same and that's right. the big difference that's the game changer uh Stu, uh not only motorbikes but the growing number of so-called supercars on the island including a well-known local off-duty policeman getting a bit far-fetched i think well I, I i must admit i was quite surprised that you'd kind of come in uh to the uh, the idea of uh, national speed limit is a good idea mm -hmm. um that surprised me because you are a petrol head no yeah, ways absolutely i've got 180 mile an hour supercar yeah. parts outside i'm very very lucky to have it i don't drive it like that though i like it as a piece of engineering if i want to go fast i'll take it to a track or whatever Whatever. And, you know, the, the stuff that I've uh, progressed with um, my, my own company is about taking speed off the roads. Yeah. If we can put it on closed roads, if we can put it on tracks, then it gets it out of people's systems in a different way. And because is that the, what you did at the supercar weekend thing that you did? That's right, so, yeah. I mean, that's, because there were, yeah, well, wasn't it, the mountain it, it, closed at no, one No, we closed the slot. Um, oh, right, you know, okay. so, so it's it's giving people that experience on the public highway when, when you have got people conditions. Coming the other you've way. got marshalling, you've got medical cover, you've got safety assessments, briefings and so on. Yeah. The, the public road, I have a difficulty with it in terms of it being a, a way of getting from A to B and then uh, should people be able to use it as a fairground? I still sit very uncomfortably with that. I always have done. Sure. I've not changed you know, my, my, my tack just because I've left the cops. I've always been very uncomfortable with that. So th there's big debates we've got to have. It's a big elephant in the room. It'll be interesting to see what the politicians decide and, and whether they listen to the constituents and their, their overall views. All right. Uh, comment for me. Stop criticising people's driving. It's not against the law to drive below the speed limit. It isn't. But there's that case of due care and attention. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, unnecessarily holding people up? Uh, could you let people pass? And there's, there's, there are the consequences that go with it as well. But overall, you know, if people are, are doing 50, 60 on the mountain road that tends to tie in with everything else it's with it's the the, the 30s yeah. and 20s yeah, 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 that you yeah. tend to notice and you do yeah. actually ask the or the people that do 40 everywhere whether it's a yeah. 20 zone <laughs> or a 60 yeah 40 mile hour uh, yeah Stu, please ask derek how come the police don't prosecute drivers who crash in poor weather for example snow they're obviously not driving to the conditions and should be done for driving without due care it's a, it's an interesting debate that i had one a few years ago uh, that uh, uh, as i was uh, driving home a vehicle overturned in snow right in front of me um, on the um, at the bungalow, and when the 
the, the officer that dealt with it came up this is what happens this and I said listen it was there's nothing they could have done about it. it they were doing literally 15 miles an hour yeah. mm -hmm. they caught an edge on the banking and the car was on its roof yeah and there's a time and a place for prosecution it's when you're driving completely out of the I'm driving like the, a balloon the, the, yeah. driving like a balloon mm -hmm. whatever yeah. the weather conditions are so it's all about the individual circumstances and some people are unfortunately caught out by the weather people do drive inappropriately during the weather and it's down to the cop to actually decide what that level of threshold is for, for due care. I, I think further training is a great thing. I've thought that for, for a long time. And, you know, the IAM is a great way of doing that. But also, I mean, there was talk years and years and years ago about having a skid pan at Jerby, which would have been a great thing, one of these cradles. Even. It's, it's something I've been looking at. I mean, there's, there's now systems where you can actually put almost like covers on the tyres which make a low friction surface and it's something we've talked about at the, at the Institute in, in terms of whether or not we should take down th that as a charitable route. Yeah. The difficulty is, is, the, is sustaining it, the um, the maintenance of it, the, the, the cost of it, making sure that the instructors are, are, are up and current. It's a big undertaking but it's something that can actually change the game. Well and it's very safe and it teaches you an awful, I reckon that I learnt more about car control on an Asda car park in Muston A35 in the snow yes at 10 miles an hour than I ever did on a racetrack. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It is, a, it is a real skill for life. All right, uh, finally, uh, let's have a look. Uh, we hear fairly often that uh, mountain is closed due to an RTA, RTC. Mm -hmm. uh, couldn't the police come on the radio periodically and state what people are doing wrong and where that accident black spot is? There must be trends. Brandywell is a case in point, says Nigel. That uh, might not be a bad thing. That there's been an accident on there, and this is what caused it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's always that sort of um, uh, prejudice in a, a, a potential prosecution yeah, side of, of things. But afterwards, maybe it's something that, that um, the road policing team want to actually report on a bit more often. This is what happened. These were the consequences, and this is how it could have been prevented. It's, it's not a bad idea. And, mm -hmm. and I know they're thinking all the time up there. You know, the, the, the monopoly on good ideas didn't... didn't um, diminish when I left the, the cops and the, the continually working at new ideas and trying to bring things into the public um, conscience and that's um, that's not a bad idea that so I'll leave right. that with Jamie and his team. Good stuff thank you very much Derek Flint and Sandra Dimelo thanks for joining us today.